Good morning, Heavenly Father. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we worship you as the creator and sustainer of the universe. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Savior and Lord of the world. Holy Spirit, we worship you, sanctifier of the people of God. Glory be to you, Father, and to the Son, and to Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we pray that we may live this day in your presence and please you more and more. Lord Jesus, we pray that this day we may take up our cross and follow you. Holy Spirit, we pray that this day you will fill us with yourself and cleanse us. Cause your fruit to ripen in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Place within us a spirit of humility that we may walk humbly with you this day. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise and our adoration. And we confess, O oh God, that we are needy. We are needy of your wisdom, of your providence, of your grace. And we confess, O oh God, that we are struggling this day with all manner of concerns and issues. We acknowledge that in this season that we are in with the COVID-19 pandemic and world issues that, that are uncertain, Lord, we need you now more than ever. We need you to move in a mighty and powerful way for your glory. Father, we lift up to you those who are feeling the strain these days of all of the challenges and all of the conditions that we have to deal with. We pray for those who are struggling with health concerns, those who have been just diagnosed with cancer and are having to come to terms with, with all that that means in their lives. We pray for those who are suffering loss, loss of a loved one, loss of employment, loss of a way of life. And we also pray for those who are awaiting new life. Those who are expecting the birth of a child Lord, in these uncertain times. We pray about your hand of favor upon them. Father, we pray for the Free Methodist Church in Canada and the Free Methodist Church around the world. We pray, O oh God, that, that as a movement we would be led by Holy Spirit. The Bishop Cliff would, would lead us from a place of wisdom which is from you. And that the leadership of the, each church within our movement, Lord, would be led by your Spirit. And would walk in your truth. And Father, 
as churches are discerning when and how uh, is the right time to gather in an in-person worship, Lord. We pray that your wisdom, your courage, and your leading would be present in their discernment process. That in all cases we will not take a step without you first directing us. Father, we thank you for your hand of favor upon us, for your hand of blessing upon us. And we pray that you will continue to guide us by your mighty and outstretched hand. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy upon us. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen.
This morning's scripture reading is written in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 23 to 29, as we hear more about great examples of faith. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we continue with our series, Faith, Hope, and Love Never Fails. And today we find ourselves in the story of Moses as the author of Hebrews continues to lead us through this hall of fame of what we might think of as the great witnesses of faith. And again, as Susan was reading our passage be, before us, you might have been thinking to yourself, I know this story, but what's it got to do with me? And I believe God holds up Moses for us as an example of someone who on various occasions could have just walked away, could have just abandoned God's plan and said, find somebody else. But he didn't, because his faith was in Almighty God, and so Moses didn't fear the uncertainties of what lay ahead of him. He didn't fear the uncertainties of what God had called him to. But he trusted in the Lord, even in the midst of unimaginable hurdles. And we're grateful. We're grateful for his example, his witness. We're grateful for his parents who saw within him something great. We are today grateful for parents or friends who have modeled a life of faith for us and have helped to shape our walk of faith in the Lord by their example. So today we'll unpack this passage a bit as we listen to what the Lord is speaking to us 
through his word. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, as we turn to your word, we pray that you will quiet in us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ. That we may hear you speaking in your wisdom, your courage, and your grace to us. And that in faithful obedience to your word and your will, we may go where you lead us. And that we may walk in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If I were to ask you if there was a character in Scripture that you most relate to, who would that be? You don't have to answer, but think about it for a moment. For much of my life, I have related to Moses and felt a connection between my story and his. And I don't know why that is, there are lots of great characters in the, in the Bible that one might want to model their life after. Moses isn't necessarily at the top of that list, but for me, our lives have shared similar characteristics in our stories. And I don't know about you, but when we look to the Bible for examples of people of faith, those whose Faith in God was unwavering. It's not an easy task to find them. Because we recognize that each one has a flaw, just like us. They have a failure, just like us. And something in their lives that has caused just a moment of doubt, or a season of doubt. Just like us. And I have to be honest, that gives me hope. Because, as I have said from the beginning, God does not demand perfection. He just wants us to turn to Him with our everything. He wants to be first and foremost in our lives. And so we begin reading in verse 23, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. Do you remember the story from Exodus chapter 1 about Moses? Pharaoh had decreed that all the newborn Hebrew baby boys were to be thrown into the Nile River and killed in an attempt to quell the growth of the Israelite people who were at that time in slavery in Egypt. But the midwives didn't comply with Pharaoh's decree. And so the Hebrew children continued to survive and grow and the nation continued to grow. And we read in that first chapter that, that God was pleased with the midwives' obedience to his will. And so he blessed the midwives with families of their own. Because God saw that what they were doing was good. And so it is as a result of the king's decree that when Moses was born, he was spared. He was placed in a basket among the reeds at the edge of the Nile River. And if we continue to read on in that story, we realize that Pharaoh's daughter finds him and adopts him as, his own, as her own. But notice that Moses' parents saw that God had given them an unusual child. That's not exactly the most complimentary thing that parents want to, to hear or acknowledge. Oh, your child is unusual. No, that's
that's not a, a great kind of term to use for a newborn child. Unusual. But some translations actually use what I think is a better word. They use the word exceptional or beautiful to describe Moses. And they could that regardless of what term you use, Moses' parents could see that this child of theirs was different in a good way, in a positive way. And so they were not afraid to, to disobey Pharaoh's commands. They didn't know what the implications of their disobedience to Pharaoh's decree would be, but they were not afraid because they knew God had blessed them with this child and they could tell that he was destined for something significant because God's hand of favor was upon them. Have you ever experienced that in your own life? Maybe it's your story, or maybe your child, or a friend, or a colleague, and you just knew in your spirit that God had a special calling on them, that God had, had placed a special favor upon them. You just knew in your spirit that they were destined for something significant. And that was Moses' parents' story. They realized that, that God had claimed him for a greater purpose. And maybe that's your story too. God had claimed you for a greater purpose. And so as we continue to read in, in this passage, we realize that indeed God had claimed Moses for a greater purpose. We read in verses 24 and 25, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. Faith is not fearing the uncertainty, friends. But it's also not knowing all the details either. As we saw last week with the story of Abraham and Sarah, God called them, but he didn't give them all the details. God called Moses to lead God's people Israel out of slavery in Egypt into the land he had promised their ancestors. But he hadn't given Moses all the details. And so in the midst of these uncertainties, Moses stepped out in faith, not fearing. Moses exhibits this, this characteristic, this truth, when he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And we have to realize that in doing so, he was basically cutting himself out of the will. He was cutting himself out of Pharaoh's family. He was abandoning the comforts and pleasures and safety of living under Pharaoh's roof. He gave up the lack of luxury to be a slave for God's people's sake. To set his people free from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. And I like the way it's put in our passage. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. Ah, the fleeting pleasures of sin. That's the world of Satan. You see, Satan tempts the unsuspecting person with tantalizing pleasures of the flesh that go against the will of God. And when we succumb, he's got us where he wants us. And the pleasures which so tantalized us and drew us into his will fade as the fleeting pleasures of sin always do. And we slide into the darkness that separates us from God. But Moses chose.
chose instead to stand with God's people in faith, not fearing the uncertainties, but refusing to succumb to the fleeting pleasures of sin. And so we read in verse 26, he thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. For he was not looking ahead to his great reward. Sorry. For he was looking ahead to his great reward. This story is a foreshadow of what Christ would come to accomplish for us here among us and giving up his throne at the right hand of God to stand with his people, to suffer as a slave, and ultimately to give his life a ransom for ours in order that we might have life in all its fullness, freed from the burden of sin for all eternity. Moses suffered in faith and received the reward set before him, eternity in God's presence, the hope of glory received by faith. And so verses 27 and 28 recount the Exodus story of the Passover. We read, it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. Verses 27 and 28 recount the Exodus story of the Passover, which to this day is central to the story of God's people Israel, and again a foreshadow of what Christ would accomplish on the cross at Calvary for us gathered here today. And as believers in the risen Christ, Jesus is our perfect, unblemished Passover lamb, who bore our sin, and through whose blood we are cleansed. The one through whom we are saved. And the receiving of communion or the Lord's Supper by faith is our reminder of what God did for us through his one and only Son, Jesus, on the cross at Calvary to save us and free us from slavery to sin. For Moses and the Israelites, the Passover was the occasion when they remember what God did to save them and free them from slavery in Egypt. The blood of the sacrificial lamb was smeared on the doorposts so the angel of death would know where an Israelite family was living and pass over it, sparing the firstborn son. And we symbolically pour the blood into the chalice, following the example Jesus gave us as he was celebrating his last Passover with his disciples. Chalice representing the cup of suffering Jesus accepted to accomplish God's will and plan for his people, you and me gathered here today. And Moses kept his eyes on the one who is invisible, as do we here today, fixing our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. Almighty God called Moses to this ministry out of a burning bush that was not consumed. Moses had an intimate relationship with God whom he could not see, but who led him 
with a mighty and outstretched hand. And it was by faith that he trusted in the commands of the Lord and did not fear the anger of Pharaoh, whom he could see. Moses knew God was stronger, wiser, more capable, and more trustworthy than Pharaoh. And so he placed his complete faith and trust in God. And yet we must acknowledge it was his failure to do as the Lord commanded him that led to his not being able to lead the people of Israel into the promised land, the land that the Lord was giving them as an inheritance. Even though he had faith in the Lord and didn't fear the uncertainties, there are consequences for our disobedience to God's leading and commands. And Moses was not accepted from that. And finally we read in verse 29, it was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were drowned. There have been a multitude of speculations as to the truth of this account in the Exodus from Egypt by God's people Israel. Some have suggested that it's just it's a good story, but it didn't actually happen that way. But they've actually discovered and excavated pieces of chariot from the Red Sea in the little section right down at the bottom that date back to the time of the Exodus and fit with what we know about the chariots of that day, the Egyptian chariots of that day. And I say this not because we need proof, because we don't need proof. But because there are those, Christians and non-Christians alike, who doubt some of the truths of Scripture. They acknowledged that, yes, God led his people out of Egypt, out of slavery, but it didn't really happen the way it's depicted in Scripture. And this is troubling to me because you either believe in the inerrancy of Scripture or you don't. And I will go on record as saying that I believe the Bible is the inerrant, inspired Word of God given to us that we may know him more intimately and to know his will for us fully. And so when we read these accounts, I believe that in faith, trusting in the Lord and his word. And it was by faith that the people of Israel believed the word of God given them through God's servant Moses. And they trusted the Lord to deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh and slavery in Egypt. And so they stepped out in faith to cross the Red Sea on what was, for all intents and purposes, dry ground. Their carts, their livestock, their children, and adults alike were able to cross without a single one being lost. Not so for the Egyptian army who were in hot pursuit, truly miraculous work of God. Think about it for a moment. Have you ever walked on the seashore when the tide has gone out? You'd be hard pressed to call it dry ground. In fact, it's quite, it can be quite mucky. In fact, you may have lost a boot or a sandal in the process. That was not the case for the people of Israel. Moses and the people crossed the Red Sea on dry ground with a wall of water on both sides. You 
can, you can imagine these people who no doubt knew about the conditions of the seashore when the tide was out and wondered, all right, so the water's gone, but how are we going to get our carts and animals across in this muck? But God provided beyond their imagination and saved them from certain death. And so in faith, they stepped out and walked across to the other side. And maybe you found yourself faced with a seemingly insurmountable challenge before you that you just can't see a way through, a way forward. And in faith you surrender to the Lord and He provided the ways and means to move forward without fearing the uncertainties. Ways and means that you never thought uh, thought of or thought possible, but truly with God all things are possible. Nothing is impossible for Him. And Susan, Joyce, and I have both certainly experienced this firsthand as we've trusted in the Lord coming here. It seemed a monumental task to get us all here from Vancouver area, and yet God provided in ways that left us in awe and wonder and even tears at His grace and His gracious providential hand leading us and providing for us and caring for us. And it truly has been the fulfillment of John 15 verse 5, apart from Him we can do nothing. God has been so good to us and continues to be so. And he, re he receives all the glory and the praise for His leading us and providing abundantly for us through the sea of uncertainty. If we were able to move forward in His strength without fear, even with all the uncertainties, the uncertainties of not knowing the place He had prepared for us. It was and is by faith that we continue to trust in Him completely. To surrender our lives, believing that He will never abandon or forsake us if we will humbly seek Him with our whole heart. And it is by faith that generation after generation of believers have heeded Jesus' call to come, follow me, who have received his invitation to dine with him at his table and receive the bread of life and the cup of salvation by faith. And so it is today that we too receive the Lord's Supper by faith believing in the saving grace of our risen Lord. Friends, I don't know what you're dealing with today in your own life, your own heart, what obstacles you may be facing, what struggles or burdens you may be carrying, but I know the one who does. And he invites you to allow him to help you with them. We read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, and verses 28 to 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Friends, it is by faith that we accept Jesus' offer to help us with our burdens, to teach us His ways, and to receive rest for our weary souls. The peace which passes all understanding. And so I invite you to just quiet your hearts and souls for a moment. And ask Jesus to help you with whatever you're dealing with today. For at His table we can receive healing, courage, and wisdom to move forward by faith.
He truly desires to minister to our heart here and now. Will you lay whatever it is you're dealing with at the cross and ask Jesus to help you with it? Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you provide abundantly for us, that you lead us, and that you save us. Father, we thank you for your word, which encourages us and gives us strength, our daily bread, to nourish our souls. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to offer your life in exchange for ours, paying our sin debt in full, that we may have full communion with you for all eternity. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you guide us and uphold us with your love and your grace. And that all, in all ways, you lead us in the truth of God's word. That we may trust in you completely. And so, God, we just commit the rest of this day to your care and your keeping. And as we dine at your table, Lord, may your Holy Spirit heal us and strengthen us for our daily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, this is the table of the Lord. This is Christ's table, and he is the host. And he welcomes you. He invites you to come and dine with him at his table. So you who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and humbly Kneeling, make your honest confession to Almighty God. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we confess that we have sinned and we are deeply grieved as we remember the wickedness of our past lives. We have sinned against you, your holiness, and your love, and we deserve only your indignation and anger. We sincerely repent and we are genuinely sorry for all wrongdoing and every failure to do the things we should. Our hearts are grieved. And we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us. Cleanse us. Give us strength to serve and please you in newness of life and to honor and praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we pray together the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy has promised forgiveness to all who turn to you with hearty repentance and true faith, have mercy upon us. 
Pardon and deliver us from our sins. Make us strong and faithful in all goodness. And bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our own hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is always right and proper and our moral duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the inhabitants of heaven, the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, we honor and adore your, your glorious name ever, forever and ever, praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do come to this your table, O merciful Lord, with self-confidence and pride, trusting in your own righteousness. But we trust in your great end and many mercies, Lord. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs from under your table, but you, O oh Lord, are unchanging in your mercy. And your nature is love. Grant us, therefore, God of mercy, God of grace, so to eat at this your table, that we may receive in spirit and in truth the body of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the merits of his shed blood, so that we may live and grow in his life. being washed and cleansed through his most precious blood, we may evermore live in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his sacrifice offered once for all, did provide a full, perfect, and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world, we come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Here is the merciful Father, we humbly ask and grant that we, receiving this bread and this wine as he commanded, and in the memory of his passion and death, may partake of this most blessed body and blood. Friends, we are told in Paul's letter to the church in Corinth that on the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he was reclining at table with his disciples. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood, poured out for the remission of the sins of men. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. 
grants these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to participate in the Lord's Supper with me together as we eat the bread and drink the cup. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, giver for you. sacramental meal that you have invited us to share together in your presence. We thank you, Jesus, for welcoming us at your table and for the healing and the redemption that we receive through being in your presence here. We thank you that your body is the bread of life. Spirit, send us out into the world as redeemed and restored and rejuvenated people, your people, that we may bear witness to the saving grace of Jesus Christ in the words we speak and the things we do. And as people look at us, they don't see us, but they see Christ in us and his light shining through us. May they experience his grace and his love and his compassion through the words we speak. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here at this table. And we thank you for your presence in our lives, abiding in us and living through us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And all God's people said together, 